Today's lesson uh, is the student will be able to add and subtract decimals. The Common Core standard today is 6NS3. Students should be able to fluently add, subtract, multiply, and divide multi-digit decimals using the standard algorithm for each operation. The key idea here is that when we're adding and subtracting decimals, to add and subtract decimals, we write the numbers vertically and line up the decimal point. Then we bring down the decimal point and add or subtract as you would with whole numbers. The reason why we line up the decimal points is because that will align each of our place values correctly. So that we're adding tenths with tenths, hundredths with hundredths, ones with ones, tens with tens, and so on. So when we're adding subtracting, we have to align those decimal points. All right, here's problem number one. We want to add. 8 and 13 hundredths and 2 and 76 hundredths. Our first step is to align uh, everything vertically. So we have 8 and 13 hundredths and I want to add to that 2 and 76 hundredths. Right? We make sure that our decimal points are aligned here so we write the numbers vertically. When we add, I add as if I add as if they're whole numbers. 3 and 6 will be 9. 1 and 7 will be 8. We write our decimal point. 8 and 2 is 10. All right? And that's our sum. 8 and 13 hundredths plus 2 and 76 hundredths gives us 10 and 89 hundredths. Our second example. We have 1 in 459 thousandths and we're adding oops try that again and we're adding 23 and 7 tenths All right. notice I had to leave enough space to make sure that my ones were aligned so we have our decimal points aligned our ones are with ones tenths with tenths and so on now here you'll notice we don't have any numbers here in 23 and 7 tenths we don't have any hundredths we don't have any thousands so we should just put some zeros there alright just to hold those place value hold those places decimal places then we add 9 and 0 is 9 5 and 0 is 5 4 and 7 is 11 put down the 1 carry the 1 All right, put in my decimal point 1 and 1 is 2 and 3 is 5 and then we have 2 All right, so we have 25 and 159 thousandths okay when we subtract decimals we want to go through the same procedure write the numbers vertically align our decimal points and then add or subtract so I'm going to start with 5 and 508 thousandths and then we have 3 and 174 thousandths. Right? We're subtracting here. 8 minus 4 is 4. I can't subtract 7 from 0. So I borrow from the 5. Oops. Rename it a 4. That 0 becomes a 10. 10 take away 7 is 3. 4 take away 1 is 3. Decimal point. 5 take away 3 is 2. So we have 2 and 334 thousandths. Our next problem, we have 21 and 9 tenths. And I want to take away 1 and 605 thousandths. Right? We're subtracting. Once again, I have no numbers here, no digits. So I want to put some zeros to hold those uh, decimal places. And now I do my subtraction. I can't subtract 5 from 0. I can't borrow from this 0. So I have to go all the way to the 9 and borrow. I borrow from the 9. Rename it an 8. This 0 becomes 10. But that still doesn't help me subtract here. All right. So I have to borrow from this 10. Rename it a 9. And that 0 becomes a 10. You have to really be careful with your subtracting that you're borrowing and renaming each place value. Too often students make mistakes because they're renaming or they're they're uh, adding before they uh, rename 
from where they are borrowing. So I can subtract now. 10 take away 5 is 5. 9 take away 0 is 9. 8 take away 6 is 2. Decimal point. 1 minus 1 is 0. And we have a 2 here. So we have 20 and 295 thousandths. Right here are some examples, right? We'll go through each one of these. Right. We'll start with number one. Well, we have four and two hundred six thousandths, and I'm adding ten and eighty five hundredths. Right. I have to make sure my decimal points are aligned and my place values are aligned. I want to put a zero there to hold that decimal place. So we have six. We have 5, 8 and 2 is 10, put down a 0, carry the 1, got to put in my decimal point, 1 and 4 is 5, and we have 1. So 15 and 56 thousandths. Problem 2, we have 15 and 5 tenths, and we're adding 8 and 229 thousandths. I want to put in these zeros to hold these decimal places. It's going to help me with my subtraction. I can't subtract 9 from 0. I can't borrow from this 0. So I have to go all the way to the 5 and borrow from the 5, rename it a 4. That 1 that I borrow makes this 0 a 10. Still doesn't help me subtract here. So I have to borrow from this 10, rename it a 9, and that 0 becomes a 10. 10 take away 9 is 1. 9 take away 2 is 7. 4 take away 2 is 2. Put in my decimal point. I can't subtract 8 from 5. Borrow from the 1, rename it to 0. That 5 becomes 15. 15 take away 8 is 7. Ah, but what did I do wrong there? I should have been adding. So we will reverse. All right, we will reverse. And do that again. <laughs> We're adding. So that's 9. That's 2. That's 7. Decimal point. 8 and 5 is 13. 3 carry the 1. That should be a 2. All right? And I've seen students make that same mistake that I just made. All right? We're not paying enough attention to the sign. And sometimes we'll add when we're supposed to subtract or subtract when we're supposed to add. So we do have to pay close attention to the sign because if I can make a mistake, all right, we can all make mistakes. So we have 78 and 41 hundredths. We're adding 90 and 99 hundredths. All right. 9 and 1 is 10. Put down the 0, carry the 1. 1 and 4 is 5. 5 and 9 is 14. Put down the 4, carry the 1. Here's my decimal point. 1 and 8 is 9. 7 and 9 is 16. 169 and 40 hundredths. Problem four. All right now, I think we get to some subtraction problems. So this is six and thirty-four hundredths, and we're subtracting five and thirty-three hundredths. Four minus three is one. Three minus three is zero. Decimal point. Six take away five is one. We have one and one hundredth. Problem five. We have twenty-seven and nine tenths. I have to take away nine hundred five thousandths. All right, here we're going to have to add some zeros to hold those place values. I can't subtract five from zero. I can't borrow from this zero. So I have to go all the way to the nine and borrow. Borrow from the nine, rename that an eight. This becomes ten. Still can't subtract five from zero. So I borrow from the ten, rename it a nine. And that 0 becomes a 10. I can now subtract. 10 take away 5 is 5. 9 take away 0 is 9. Can't subtract 9 from 8. Borrow from the 7. Rename it a 6. That 8 becomes 18. 18 take away 9 is 9. Decimal point. 6 take away 0 is 6. And then we have a 2. So we have 26. 995 thousandths. Problem 6. We have 18 and 
26 thousandths. So I'm going to take away 13 and 88 hundredths. I'm going to add a zero here to hold that place value and now I can subtract. 6 minus 0 is 6. I can't subtract 8 from 2. So I borrow from the 6. Rename it a 5. That 2 becomes 12. 12 take away 8 is 4. Can't subtract 8 from 5. So I borrow from the 8. Rename it a 7. That 5 becomes 15. 15 take away 8 is 7. We have our decimal point. 7 take away 3 is 4 and we have 4 and 746 thousandths. Word problem. Your meal at the school cafeteria costs $3.45. Your friend's meal costs $3.90. You pay for both meals with a $10 bill. How much change do you receive? So we have a multi-step problem here. Step one, we have to find the total cost of the food. So that's going to be addition. So that's going to be the $3.45 and we have to add the $3.90. That's going to be 5, 4 and 9 is 13, put down the 3 carry the 1 on our decimal point, 1 and 3 is 4 and 3 is 7. So $7.35 is the total cost for the food, but we're asked, how much change do you receive from a $10 bill, right? So that's going to be subtraction. So I write my $10, putting in a couple decimal places so that we can subtract, and we have to take away the $7.35 from the uh, $10. Now I can't subtract 5 from 0, I can't borrow from 0, can't borrow from 0, I have to go all the way to this 1 borrow from the 1, rename that as 0, this 10 becomes, or that 0 becomes 10, still can't subtract, so I borrow from the 10, rename it a 9, this 0 becomes 10, still can't subtract 5 from 0, borrow from that 10, rename it a 9, that 0 becomes 10, I subtract, 10 take away 5 is 5, 9 take away 3 is 6, decimal point, 9 take away 7 is 2, so $2.65 would be the change, right? And that's step two. All right, should have labeled that step number two. All right, our next problem. The Lincoln Memorial reflection pool is approximately rectangular. All right, let me scroll down so we can see the whole picture. There we go. Its width is 50.9 meters. Its length is 618 and 44 hundredths meters. You walk the perimeter of the pool. How many meters did you walk? Well, the perimeter is the distance around the entire pool. So we have to add all four of these values to find the total distance around the pool. So let's make sure we carefully align our decimal points. So we're going to do 618 and 44 hundredths and 618 and 44 hundredths, we have 50 and 9 tenths, and another 50 and 9 tenths. All right, and we're adding a column of numbers. All right, I'm going to put zeros in here as placeholders. 4 and 4 is 8, 4 and 4 is 8, 8 and 9 is 17, 17 and 9 is going to be 26. Put down the 6. Carry my 2. 2 and 8 is 10. And 8 is 18. Put down the 8. Carry the 1. 1 and 1 is 2. And 1 is 3. 3 and 5 is 8. 8 and 5 is 13. Put down the 3. Carry the 1. 6 and 1 is 7. And 6 is 13. So we get 1,338 and 6,800 meters would be the perimeter around the pool. Let's try these two problems here. You might want to try them on your own. See what answers you get. All right, but I will, of course, do these examples as well. So we'll start with problem 7 here. Problem 7 is similar to the earlier problem. We want to buy lunch, $4.10 for your friend's meal, and uh, 
or for your meal and three dollars sixty five cents for your friend's meal you pay for both meals with a twenty dollar bill how much change do you receive so just as we did in the other problem it's going to be two steps step one all right i want to find the total so that's going to be four hundred ten dollars four hundred ten four dollars ten cents and three dollars sixty five cents we're adding that's going to be five one and six is seven decimal point four and three is seven so we spend a total of seven dollars seventy five cents for food step two we need to find the change from a twenty dollar bill so i put my twenty dollar bill i want to subtract seven dollars seventy five cents right we make sure we align those decimals i can't subtract so i have to go all the way to the two to borrow from the two rename it a one that zero becomes ten borrow from the 10 rename it a 9 that 0 becomes 10 borrow from that 10 rename it a 9 and now I'm ready to subtract 10 minus 5 is 5 9 take away 7 is 2 we have our decimal point another 9 take away 7 is 2 and then we have a 1 so $12 25 cents would be our change 12.75 and then our last problem, problem number eight, is, let's see, we're looking for the perimeter of the triangle. So for problem eight, we have to add these four numbers. So we have our 6604, we have our 60 and 96 hundredths, we have our 25 and 4 tenths, and I need to find the sum. All right, I'll put a zero down here as a placeholder and now I'm ready to add 4 and 6 is 10 I've done the 0 carry the 1 1 and 9 is 10 10 and 4 is 14 I've done the 4 carry the 1 put in my decimal point 1 and 6 is 7 7 and 5 is 12 I've done the 2 carry the 1 1 and 6 is 7 and 6 is 13 13 and 2 is 15 so the perimeter is going to be 152 and 4 40 hundredths those are centimeters. All right, those are our examples for today. Just remember the key with addition and subtraction of decimals is to align those decimal points. If we align those decimal points, it means that all of our place values are aligned and then we'll be successful with our addition and our subtraction. All right, hope that was helpful.